Yes, 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 who got brands talking? Brandlive.co.za Good afternoon and welcome to Love and Relationship. My name is Ndun Indun. I will be sharing with you some wisdom keys about love and relationship. Stay tuned. Welcome to Love and Relationship. Today I will be talking about little things that can destroy marriage. You know, a lot of times we say, I just did this little thing and then he's upset or I just did this little thing and she's that angry. Well, in my own understanding of marriage is that nothing is really little. Whatever you do that affects your partner negatively can cause a negative response from your partner and it can affect marriage. It can affect your relationship. And then we want to look at those things that people will call little. You know, I could call them little foxes that spoil the vine of marriage. You know, little issues that become big. And most times looking at it, I think most marriages don't just grumble because of big issues. Most have a problem because of what the partners will call little things. For example, little things like unforgiveness can become a major issue in a marriage. You know, a situation where one partner did something to the other and the other one cannot forgive, cannot take it out of his or mind. You know, sometimes you say, yeah, I've forgiven you, but you know, you keep stuck of the wrong things. Someone once asked me that some issues, he believes that some issues can never be forgotten. Yeah, but it can be forgiven, but not forgotten. So I asked the person, how much do you want to store up before you can learn to forget? Because the truth of the matter is that true healing comes when you forgive and forget. But if you cannot forget, but you say you've forgiven, it can become a problem in your relationship. So unforgiveness can be a little thing that eats up a relationship. I've heard a story of uh, a man who asked his wife after being married for many years and said, uh, I've always been good to you. I've been nice to you. I think I've tried my best and all that. And the wife said to him, please don't even start because you remind me of what you did 15 years ago. <laughs> and uh, 15 years ago, and she could recount the date, the time, the place, you know, everything, the scenario that happened. And the man was shocked to his bone. Do you still keep stock of this? I mean, how do you even remember this? She remembered the color of clothes he wore that day, what happened, everything. And that can become a challenge in a relationship. You see, when you have something that is in your heart that you've not let go of, it becomes like um, a barrier, something that stands in between you and your partner, something that restrains you from giving your best in your relationship. It becomes like, you know, something which causes you to fear. Because for me, a, a perfect relationship is a relationship without fear. It's not a relationship without mistakes. It's a relationship where both people involved can express themselves without fear of being judged, fear of being, you know, unforgiven or something like that. So when you have these things in your mind, unforgiveness, it's something your partner did and you could not forgive, then it will it will definitely hinder you from giving your best in your relationship. And, you know, when you cannot give your best, you will start dropping the level to which you can give. And it will reduce time after time. I've said to couples that one of the things I believe become a big challenge in a marriage relationship are issues that are not properly resolved. Properly resolved in, in, in a way that both parties are good to go. They are happy again. You know, when you have an issue that is not properly resolved, it, it leaves you with a mindset to say, 
I don't want to be hurt anymore. So I, I cannot give 100% anymore because the last time I gave 100%, this is where I found myself. So now I think it's better I, I protect myself. Let me give 80 and maybe 60 or something. And, and you know, for every issue that is not resolved properly, the amount of commitment, the, the measure of commitment you put in in that relationship drops and it drops and it drops. And sometimes you don't know until it drops to zero. It drops to nothing. You have nothing to offer this relationship anymore because you have a lot of hurts, a lot of hurts. And why do you have a lot of hurts? Because they have not been forgiven. You're not healed. So this is what I will recommend for unforgiveness. Please sit your partner down and tell your partner, I have this little issue that bothers me. I have this problem. This thing you did at this time, at this time. You know, I can't really let go of it. Is there any way you can give me assurance or reassurance or give me understanding on how we can move forward with this? I believe that honest communication can help heal wounds. It can help people to forgive and forget. And, you know, a lot of times people say, well, it doesn't matter whether I forget or not. Please, try and forget. One of the ways you can prove that you are totally healed is that when that issue is mentioned, you don't react the way you did react before. You don't get so offended the way you did get offended before. In fact, you don't even get offended. There are some issues that couples had, you know, in the past. And when they have resolved it, when they now talk about it, they laugh over it. It becomes a fun thing. Look, that's what you did. And that's what you did. You know, they just laugh over it. That's an issue that has been properly resolved. It, it doesn't hold weight in their heart. It doesn't keep them from giving their best to each other. So it's one thing that we must really look out for. Unforgiveness is a little canker worm that can eat up marriage. And the second one I want to talk about is pride. Pride is one thing that looks, it looks little to some people. You know, I'm just trying to maintain, you know, my myself. I mean, I'm trying to, you know, maintain what I believe. But you cannot work with someone. You can't go forward. So pride for me, it's very, very crucial to sort it out. In other words, my understanding of pride in a relationship is this. When you have an issue with your partner, and that issue is an issue then, must definitely go your way. Whether you are wrong or you are right, then there is a problem. Because I believe that the understanding of relationship should be that we want the best for this relationship. It doesn't matter whether it comes from me, or it comes from you, or it comes from, you know, it can even come from the children, but <laughs> let it be the best for the relationship. So when you have issues that with your partner and you cannot sit down to talk about it, to discuss it, to draw out the best going forward, you want it to be your own way, your own words, you know, everything must be the way you want it then there might be pride somewhere around the corner. And pride doesn't work anything good. I believe that some marriages dissolve because someone had pride or both people had pride which they could not sit down to find the best for their relationship. I don't think any relationship can really, really function well between people who are full of pride. I think that for a relationship to function well, there must be some element of humility. Humility to acknowledge that you don't know it all. Humility to acknowledge that you, you're not the best. You can make mistakes. Humility to acknowledge that you're not perfect. So when you come to this point, you can easily work with your spouse and work out something good. I will take a short break and we will be back to continue. Stay right there. 
Banang, how are you? Hi, Tuli. You look so beautiful. Hey, long time no see. What happened to your skin, by the way? The last time I saw you, you had a lot of blemishes and breakouts. It was so terrible, man. Wow, thanks for that, Banang. Luckily, I discovered DMK. Have you heard of DMK? DMK? Who are they? DMK is a paramedical skincare brand that specializes in all skin conditions. Would you like their number? Yes, please. I know you're not good at numbers, so let me give you their website address because your skin looks terrible. It's www.dmkskincare.co.za Whether you're an athlete or just going about your day-to-day -day business, use Turbo Freeze on the go for any pain relief or inflammation. It's the number one pain relief formula. To find out more, log on to our website www.turbofreeze.co.za Harnessing the power of talk radio. Brandlive.co.za Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za The unique experience. Living as One Events presents Relationship Talks, Drama, Q&A Sessions, Music, Love Stories, Ladies and Gents Session, and lots more. Registration fee at 150 Rand. Happening at Bread of Life Foundation Venue, Honeydew Shopping Center, Bayers Nodier Drive, Corner Blueberry Drive, Unit 66, Laser Park, Honeydew. Saturday, 15 September at 11 a.m. RSVP on 072-851-8702. Live from 27 boxes in the heart of Melville, this is brandlive.co.za. Love and relationship. I'm still here talking about little things that destroy marriage. Things that people may consider as little. But like I said before, I don't think there is any little thing in a relationship. You know, a lot of times I see that some partners seem to, they seem to underestimate the, the value of some things that they, they bring on the table or the, or the things that they do. Because, you see, whatever you do, you should do it considering your partner you should do it considering the good of your partner it shouldn't be how you feel you know even there's some things like people make some jokes some criticism people do towards their partner and they said i was just joking if you've had a partner and you've been with your partner especially for a while and you've gotten to know your partner, you know there's some jokes that will not work out well with your partner. So you have to learn to do things according to what works out well with your partner. That's why a good relationship is the ability to consider one another, the ability to consider the good of your partner, the well-being of your partner. It's not just about you. It's not just about what you want. It's also about what your partner will be comfortable with, what your partner also desires. So when you have this in mind, considering your partner's well-being, the good of your partner, you'll be able to regulate the things that you do. You will always ask yourself, how will this be? I mean, will this sit well with my partner if I say this or if I do this? And that brings me to a point where I will also like to recommend to people to always think through what they want to do. Because a lot of times I've found out that people in marriage take each other for granted. They don't think through, they don't process what they just want to do. They just want to do it because after all it's your partner. And that's why a lot of people don't get good responses from their partners because they don't process what they want to do. Imagine you trying to get maybe a day off from your boss. 
you 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 find a way to put out your request you put it in a way that your boss can accept you know you find the right words the right way to communicate it and then your boss will say yes and then you'll be happy and then you say if it was my wife she will always say no but think about it do you communicate to your wife the way you communicate with your boss i mean you think through it you process it you plan it well and you put it out to her if you do the same way i believe that she can also say yes because human beings always try to find out how you regard them how much you 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 consider them in whatever you want to do so this brings me to another thing that can destroy marriage improper communication i call it lack of effective communication which has to do with not having an honest planned communication with your spouse some people say i will say it the way it is in my heart but one of the things they fail to understand is that whatever you say it becomes a seed that you have planted and your partner will respond to you according to the seed you have planted i would rather say that whenever you want to communicate with your partner don't just say things the way that you think you feel but try to put it in a way your partner can receive it because that is considering one another you know you can want to sell anything if you ask a good sales person a good sales person can sell anything but the thing is that the person will find a way that you can receive what he wants to sell or a way to communicate what he or she wants to market to you properly because anybody can walk away from any product that is not being communicated properly to the person so effective communication is an honest communication being put out in a proper way that the other person can receive it and that's why you have to get to know and understand your partner don't take each other for granted don't some people could say i've been married for 10 years i've been married for 20 years you should understand and all that no the problem that people have is that when you stop doing the things that you used to do before with your partner the way you used to do it it can become a problem because we we are all human beings we get used to things in a particular way and that is the way your partner loved it and that's what made your partner loved you so you don't have to just change it and do it anyhow now you're going to kind of put a strain on the relationship so your ability to communicate properly effectively honestly with your partner and put it in a packaging that your partner can receive it can also help you solve some misunderstanding you have in your relationship in an easy way in a very easy way and then the last thing i want to talk about that can easily destroy a marriage is anger anger is a very terrible one it's a very terrible one some people don't have control over the emotions when they get angry they can break the tv break the radio turn the house upside down and then who fixes that after you've been calm down or you 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 come back to your senses senses so you must try to get rid of anger anger can do a whole lot of havoc in a relationship try to find a way to control yourself i think this is where a lot of men get physical on their wives and a lot of women also get abusive with words on their husbands please if there is something you're battling with and you cannot get rid of it i think god can help you it's time that we invite god into our lives into our relationships to help us because he created us and he knows how to fix you just like you know the manufacturers of cars knows how to fix the, the problems of the car so i will i will employ you to say please ask god to deliver you take you take this, the things that you're battling with away from you Don't expect your partner to fix you. 
you have to try to fix yourself. And that is by having a good relationship with God, opening up to God and ask him to help you where you have issues, where you are struggling. And God can help you. And with that help, you can have a good relationship with your partner. For there to be a good relationship, the two people have to be whole. They have to be complete. They have to come together being able to work out their issues. And I also believe that, yes, there is a place for a partner to help the other one. But don't totally depend on your partner to, you know, help you. Trust God to help you. And um, I think with these, I will have to wrap up the discussion for today. And then we will, we will continue later, you know. And then, you know, please, I would like you to stay in touch with us. If you have questions, you have comments, you have uh, topics you will want us to talk about, things you want us to share insight on, you can call me on 0782554517. And we are also having an event at the Honeydew Shopping Center. It's called the Unique Experience. I'm inviting you to be part of it. It's going to be great. It's on the 15th of September. Please make time to come. It's going to be about relationship, fun, exciting stuff that's going to happen there. Thank you very much for tuning in today. Thank you for listening. I pray that you have a beautiful, wonderful, blessed relationship with your spouse. And for those not, not married yet, please learn from these things. These are little things you need to get rid of before you get married. Thank you very much. God bless you until next week, same time. We will talk about another important relationship issue. God bless. Bye. This message was sponsored by friends and partners of Living as One events. You are invited to our singles and married couples event featuring seminars, talk shows, Q&A sessions, single mingled, couples games and many more. You may visit our website for details of our events and register at www.livingasoneevents.com. You can also get our books on relationships titled Why Should I Get Married and Living as One. We also do counseling for couples and singles who want to make the right decisions regarding their relationships. For more info, please contact us on 078-255-4517 or email us at livingasoneevents at gmail.com. Please tune in again for another episode of Love and Relationship. God bless you. Harnessing the power of talk radio. Brandlive.co.za